the world would be boring without sounds. Second most important thing is listening. Move away, you know. Do you need a quiet room? You know, like sensory deprivation. You do not hear any external sound. Bones in my each ear are broken. <gasps> Hello, hello, guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Big Apple School podcast, where the goal of this show is to help you improve your English listening skills by listening to us. My name is Benjamin. I'm from London. And today we have three wonderful participants. Our first participant today is... Is Maria. Welcome, Maria. And our second participant... Carter. And last but not least... Varia. So welcome back. So, guys, what's new? What's going on this week? Well, I've just come back from my vacation... Excellent. And tell us, where did you go? Um, my family and I, we went to Altai Mountains. Um, we traveled for five days, enjoyed the fresh air, the beautiful river. And we went not really to the border of Mon with Mongolia, but not far from the border with Mongolia. Can you cross the border yeah. there? Is it easy to cross? I mean, you have your documents, they check your car and yeah, absolutely. Is it true that they have a border crossing where there is... No, where there are no checks. I'm not sure about that. So I think I've read somewhere that somewhere you can, and they just trust people to, because how in can Russia, you? Yeah, because Russia has such a big border. How can you like guard every single inch of the Russian borders? Well, you can't. But that's why there are like points. You know, the border points and everything. I don't know. Interesting. So, did you get bitten by any ticks? No. Of course not. It's November. Yeah. <laughs> well, was it snowy there? It was not. It was not. So I was actually surprised that it was plus eight, plus nine Celsius all the time. Only once we went to one of the passes, which was 1700 uh, above the sea level, and there was snow. I was so happy. I was like, snow. Wee. And when you came back here to Novosibirsk, you were like, snow. Oh. No, I was waiting for snow. My northern soul is like... I need the snow. Yes, because you're originally from Yakutia. So I am. You do need a bit of snow. I like it when it's just, you know, when it has just fallen. So it's just so beautiful, sparkly, white. Mm. So yes. What else is new? Well, well nothing from my side. <laughs> like yeah. literally nothing. Have you checked out the new sales on the internet? No, I haven't. I bought, but, well, yeah. I, I yesterday I uh, had some uh, newsletter from yeah, from some online shops, but I forgot. I forgot to check when I came home. Fair enough. Do you like buying stuff in the sales? It's interesting that uh, they usually offer something that I don't need at this moment, <laughs> so it's it's hard to find a real bargain. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I said before to our participants before the show, I bought some new police shoes. So I don't slip when I walk on the icy streets of Novosibirsk. So okay. police shoes, because they have a really thick rubber sole. So for our listeners, um, I don't mean sole as in like someone's spirit. I mean the bottom of yeah. the shoe. So that's S-O-L-E. Cool. S-O-L-E. <laughs> S -O -L -E. Exactly. Teachers here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Varya, anything interesting? Um, well, if you want to talk about sales, um, I'm not easily lassoed in by yeah. sales. And just for a note, we in America say on sale and you say in sale. Do you know what? I would say on sale as well. Uh -huh. In sale. No, actually, no, I wouldn't say <laughs> in sale. But there are some preposition differences yeah. between British and American. For instance, on the weekend, at the weekend. What would you say? Definitely on the weekend. Yeah, we could say yeah. at the weekend. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, there are some preposition differences. And of course, needless to mention, we have got and gotten, mm. not prepositions, but nonetheless, we have plenty of differences. So, we also have a new studio, which we are in, which is really cool. It has amazing sound isolation. Oh my God, yes, which is... Which is making it so weird before the podcast when there's no music and we can hear everything. Yes. Like the breathing, everything. It's amazing. So we I, have. I like how Katya is haloed by uh, blue and <laughs> Maria, take a picture you've of got that. your halo of green. Oh, really? You've I got your halo of that. red. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> just take a picture. 
you know, after the podcast. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we have this isolation foam on the ceilings and on the walls, which completely, I don't know how to describe it. It's triangle. Do you know what? What I is it think, called? Oh, like egg carton. Egg carton. That's what it's like. You know what? I have an idea. Why don't we take a picture of the studio and post it in our private chat? I think people would be interested to see what the studio looks. Well, looks guys, like. we definitely need to mention. So we have a special private chat, which you can definitely be a part of. Just find the, you can find the private chat in the Telegram section of the Big Apple School chat. So definitely be part of that. And you can get access to the after show of this podcast. And there you can see video footage of us. And you can see, yes, the colors on the wall. And perhaps maybe you can see some of the sound isolation material. So definitely check that out. For sure. So yeah. And also I want to say thank you to those of you who comment on our social media platforms. So I just want to deal with a few comments here. We have a Instagram comment from someone called Mahovsky. Um, so he said, well, I'm going to try to translate into English. So guys, you're the best. Um, every time I listen to you in the gym, so that's a great way to listen to us is when you're exercising. Multitasking. Multitasking. Yes. Yeah, so really good idea. Continue to do that. You can also listen to us or to any other English language um, material when you're walking or when you're commuting. So really good, Mr. Mahovsky. Thank you. And then we have Roman Yegorov who said, um, I tell everyone about, I'm telling everyone about your podcast. So that's extremely lovely of you. Very kind. We very much appreciate the fact that you're spreading the love to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Roman. Yeah. And we also have a comment from Olga Lene. Oh, how do you how do you pronounce your name, Olga? Le, Le, <laughs> Weber. So interesting last name. Let us know how you pronounce your last name, Olga. But thank you very much for ask for mentioning that you like the musical um, accompaniment to the podcast. So I guess you would call it the instrumental track, yeah? <laughs> so the, which is the music you can hear right now at the mm. piano in the background. I do agree. It's very relaxing. So yeah, D does the piano relax you guys? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So it's a very one. And then we have another comment from, um, <laughs> from Kill Real. Um, <laughs> he said, cool podcast. But he also said, just fire the F, U-C-K, out of the woman who's always making ooh or o oh noises. Well, thank you for your comments, Mr. Kill, mm -hmm. Kill Real. I like your, I like your name. <laughs> um, yes, we will try to fire the person. <laughs> Benjamin. Yes. But no promises. <laughs> so yeah, maybe you might see them <laughs> on the streets of winter. <laughs> no Sibirsk in the winter soon. Well, as you know, what do you mean homeless? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, we're going to have to start a GoFundMe page yeah. for for the fired Big Apple School <laughs> participants. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we might have to take up your suggestion. But um, the ooh noises, o oh noises, maybe that's what you're referring to. They are called filler words, and yeah, they can be annoying sometimes to a lot ooh. of people. My father would say, "Don't say um." To be honest, I do agree with him. It's not a good idea to say um. But when you're speaking to people in a natural context, usually you're going to hear some filler words, whether you like them or not. Say with so, like, oh, I actually, was like... Actually, basically. What is your... Well, like, um... So is my annoying filler word. I can't stop say, saying so. People say, you know, you know. You know. Yeah, you know, yeah. a lot. Yeah, I hear that a lot. I guess my latest would be right. I tend to end all of my, most all of my sentences. With Another this. one is, do you know what I mean? Do, I, do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Yeah. I have to, yeah, is another one. And we uh, do the same in our native language as I mean, well. Yeah, it's absolutely normal in any language because otherwise the speech would be so sterile. You know, as if it's not really... Yeah, too academic, too sterile, I it's, guess. It's impossible to avoid all of the fillers. It's just important to kind of cut down on them, you know, like not to use them all the time. Or well, they add emotion to the conversation. That's true. Sometimes. But sometimes you don't notice how you use them. 
I remember when I was at university in my first year, I had to give, you know, a presentation which lasted roughly around like three minutes. And after that, my professor looked at me and said, Katya, how many times do you think you said so? Because that's your, you know, this is the word that you, this is a junk word. And I said, well, three minutes, I don't know, 10. Mm-hmm. She said, 49. Oh my God. And that was the moment when I understood that, oh my God, I need to pay attention to how I speak. But it's so difficult. Yeah. Well, it reminds me uh, of a TV show, uh, How I Met Your Mom. I think you I've guys. never seen it, but, I've but heard you, it. you know about it. Yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. it was uh, there was a character, Robin, who was a TV presenter, and she had this annoying habit of like, mm, um, but or something um, like this. But yeah, um. and then uh, they played a drinking game on her. Uh, like every time she said um on TV, they drank, <laughs> and they were like, but um, but um, they were uh, <laughs> so drunk at the end. Oh my god, yeah, I remember that. So episode, guys, you yeah. can also play a drinking game. I don't know. So yeah, play a drinking Listening game to us. with, yeah, instead, with yeah. filler words. <laughs> instead of going to the gym or after. Yes. Well, sometimes I have a cough. So maybe you can drink every time I cough. <laughs> 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 All right. I also need to mention, guys, you can find our podcast on a few different platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Yandex Podcasts, VK. And of course, you can see the video version of the podcast on YouTube. And like I mentioned before, we have a private chat. So definitely become part of that chat. You can find the details on the Big Apple School Telegram chat. And like I said before, you can get access to the backstage footage of this podcast. And of course, you can get access to the vocabulary list of words that we mention in this podcast, which will definitely improve your English learning journey. And of course, you can start a conversation there. You can practice your English skills. We've had Ruslan recently ask us the difference between it and that. And Varia very kindly provided an explanation. So do not be afraid to participate in the chat. It's really useful for your English skills. And yeah, you need to practice in order to, to learn. And we have three new followers in that chat. We have Natalie Kuzmina, Anastasia and Maria with two eyes. So thank you guys. Welcome to the conversation. And also I need to say a special thank you to Dima Kisilyov, who guessed the topic for our previous podcast, which was honesty and lying. So well done, Dima. All right, guys. Well, before we were talking about the new studio and how you can hear everything. Yeah, we can hear everything. (laughs) Yes. But what noises did we make before... (laughs) Funny you should mention that, huh? Yes. The noises and sounds. Oh, yes. It's also interesting that we don't usually notice these noises uh, in in a normal, like, surrounding, yeah? But when it is so silent here, so quiet, then, yeah, like, chewing, yes. swallowing, breathing, all types of noises. When, when people drink water or coffee, you can hear every... <laughs> every bodily function. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to like move away, you know. To stand away from the, the microphone. From the mic, yeah. Well, exactly. Well, today we're going to talk about sounds and noises. Yes, let's do that. So, yes. <laughs> well, let's get started. So, there's yeah. three, yeah, there's three different ways people can learn things. And we have auditory learners and they are people who learn from sounds. Maybe not only uh, learn things, but also perceive the, the world, world around like this, yeah. Through mm-hmm. sounds. But can you be, well, there's three main types, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Can you be 100% one of the three? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I guess you can't. We are all a mixture of everything. Yes. And what would you say you're more I'm more kinesthetic, to? I guess. I like touching things. That's like uh, that's why I like supermarkets. I touch things before I buy them. I can look at them, but I need to touch so when, and when then you get a put them back on the shelf. When you get croissant or bread, do you like to touch the croissants? Absolutely. The- well, I mean, <laughs> it is covered. <laughs> it's in package, so it's yeah. No, I mean like the ones where you have to open the. No, the box. never. No, <laughs> it, it violates my hygiene rules. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and if you think it's too hard, you just throw it back inside. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you're more of a kinesthetic. I guess so, yeah. And it, when it comes to learning languages, how would you incorporate kinesthetic learning into learning 
English or any language? Well, that is, that, this is hard. Um, I guess maybe when it comes to studying languages, I'm not so much of a kinesthetic person. Um, then maybe I'm more a visual learner. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe our, um, well, uh, the sorry, person who commented. I, I remembered. I, I guess that it, it has to do with kinesthetic. I write things down when I need to memorize something. And I uh, truly believe that uh, our motor skills are connected to our brain. So oh, like yeah, neural sure, connections sure. and everything. So when you write things down, you are more likely to memorize things better. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I, I would. Yeah, cause yeah, I guess you can remember the scenario you were in when you learn words and write them down. Well, I was going to say, um, Mahovsky, the guy who commented on our Instagram, maybe you are a kinesthetic learner because you listen to our podcast mm -hmm. in the gym. Yeah, probably. So, Mr. Mahovsky, let case, us know if you are a kinesthetic learner. But in this case, isn't that more of an audial one? Because then you listen to a podcast, so which means that you can perceive what is being said without having, you know, some sort of supporting text. Right, so it's a combination then. Because, um, yeah, because... I, I read an article a long time ago about how children can learn by, if you see a child turning in a circle, mm -hmm. and this sociologist came up with the fact that it's connected with learning. Mm -hmm. So you mean like spinning just, in yeah, a circle? Yeah, just turning in a circle, you know, how, how kids do, and that's yeah. how, how they can learn. There is even a method of uh, teaching children like TPR, total physical response, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. they do things in order to remember words. Yes. Well, but you know about learning. Um, I think no matter what type of a learner you are, whether you're a kinesthetic, a visual, you know, the auditory one, there is this saying which is repeated so often in the teaching community, which is, tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I'll remember. Involve me and I'll learn. Meaning if you just hear the word, you're most likely to forget that. If you write it down or if you see it, that higher, there are higher chances of you remembering it. But if you do something and you have this association with the word, you write it down, you use it yourself, then you're more likely to remember that. But still the first step would be hearing the word. So let's not ignore the importance <laughs> of sounds and And also noises. one thing I absolutely need to mention is part of learning words is forgetting the words and then look and reviewing the words again. Mm. So Right, so I will ask myself a question. How many times do you have to look up the same word? And yeah. sometimes it takes me like 10 times, but I make myself do it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, maybe you'll learn it. It's pretty scientific, by the way. Yeah, from 8 to 10. Yeah, and then. Yeah, 8 to remember. 10 times you're going to remember mm -hmm. it. Well, what I've found from learning foreign languages is I tend to remember words where I've, for instance, let, let me take the word fire extinguisher, like Agnetushitil in Russian. Like, I do not use fire extinguishers on a daily basis. I do not know why I remember this word, but I must have been in a certain place at a certain time, and my brain must have had a lot of emotional stimuli. Mm -hmm. You have an anchor. An anchor, yeah. Maybe it was cold, maybe. So if you want to really remember words, you have to give yourself as much like stimuli as possible, whether it's visual, um, any kind of sensory stimuli. And repetition... And what Maria was talking about writing, because you you discover letters that you didn't realize were there when you're writing them. Mm -hmm. I like that repetition. Yeah, repetition. Well, it is key. It's, I think it's for everyone. Everyone needs to repeat words to yeah, fully learn them. Yeah. Well, I guess we all are a mixture of mm, this ways, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic types yeah. with maybe the leading part. Yeah. I'd say maybe I'm a mixture of visual and kinesthetic. What about what about you, Katia? What would you say you are? I think the same, visual and kinesthetic. So visual for sure. So for me, it's important to see the word. You know, that's why that's why I have a lot of post-it notes and stickers, you know, on my above my desk with the words that I need to remember. So I'm learning Spanish at the moment. And when mm -hmm. there is a phrase that I really need to remember, but I can't, I make sure to write it down in my special notebook put a sticker on the wall, you know, just make sure I see this word often. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm not going to remember. That's why I have notebooks, color coding. So I remember very often when I saw the word and where I saw the yeah. word. Mm -hmm. so let's remember. Say, yeah. We had, we had a lesson just a couple of days ago and I was like, oh, I remember this word was in, in the text about the Dia de los Muertos. 
uh, that we read three weeks ago. And she's like, yeah, there was a word like that. that." It was line three, yeah. Yeah, I remember like where in the text it was, what context. So yeah, I think I'm more of a visual learner. But an interesting thing about languages is that we uh, can't ignore the sound of the language, how it sounds, because it's like the primary thing. Because even if we are visual learners or kinesthetic learners, we will still need to listen to the language itself. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah. it's so important. If, if you don't listen to it, you just make up your own language and you're just talking gibberish. Yeah. And then when you really hear it, it's like, what? <laughs> That's why I think it's impossible to learn the language through just the book, without a teacher, without anyone, without speaking. Mm-hmm. Impossible. Well, Steve Kaufman, who's this famous um, polyglot on YouTube, who's this older guy who teaches people how to learn languages really well. He says listening is the, well, the most important thing is learning a lot of words. Second, most important thing is listening. Mm -hmm. So important. And then reading and speaking is important, but it's not as important as listening Mm. because that's what little babies do when they're born. They listen to their mother and father for like a Mm -hmm. year and a half. And then after one year of constant communication, they Mm -hmm. finally say their first word. Yeah, I guess babies, before they are born, what they can do, they can only hear, they can only listen to something like outside, to the world outside. Exactly. That's so, how they perceive the world. Yeah, which is probably why Steve Kaufman suggested that listening is one of the most important um, steps to learning yeah. a language. Mm-hmm. So yeah, what about you, Varia? What's your... So you said you said kinesthetic, kinesthetic you yeah, said writing. visual, I have to listen to it. I'm all of them. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah, seeing it on a sticky note or something somewhere in your bathroom or something. I remember um, writing in the bathroom, I think on the mirrors in black marker in the (laughs) bathroom. And my poor daughter, she goes, oh, what are you doing writing on the mirrors? Oh, I know. I'd write on the shower Ah. walls because, you know, you (laughs) can easily take it off. It looked kind of creepy and scary. Yeah, writing in the condensation was something I used to do when I was a kid, <laughs> a lot. No, with a black marker. I oh, with a black with marker. With a black marker. So, so that's what was so, so creepy about it. You go, you step into the shower and you see all these black marks. <laughs> it's what funny. you can see in, in a film <clears throat> when the detective comes to a crime scene right. and like, yeah, <laughs> some <laughs> message from a <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, but I guess the world would be boring without sounds. I oh think. yeah, for sure. Yeah, if it if it was silent, it would be. Quite boring. It would be pretty horrible to be deaf. I would be really sad if, well, of course, if Mm. you lost any sense, but yeah. Yeah. It would take away so much. Mm -hmm. So let's give the credit for sounds. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. So would you say that you notice a lot of sounds like before you go to sleep? Do you need a quiet room when you go to sleep? Preferably. Mm. But I know that, I remember we talked about it with you, that you have, your windows face the road or something, and you're totally fine with falling asleep when there are motorcycles and cars, you know, going around and all this hustle and bustle. Yeah, like engines of cars and trains, I love that noise. It kind of lulls me away to sleep. If it is not too loud and if it is just the background kind of white noise, yeah. Because when it is quiet, it's not quiet. And then maybe it's even more irritating when something comes up. Like, like a, some sound. Like a, a faucet dripping. Mm-hmm. That yeah. would irritate me so yeah. much. Or clock oh, ticking. Oh no, clock ticking. Uh-uh. I can't do that. I remember I have a friend and every time she was staying at my place, she's like, can you please take the battery out of the clock? I just right. can't fall asleep. It's annoying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But all in all, you know, if I'm, let's say, walking in the street, I don't think I notice as much. So there are some moments when I try to pay attention to everything that is happening around, and then I start to notice the sounds. But in general, I think not as much. So I have um, something with my ears, I guess it's hereditary. Three bones in my each ear are broken. Oh, right. Or some kind of crack. And so I hear sounds in my head. And I can hear my um, blood rushing through. And yes, I can hear things. And so like right now, uh, it's on my right side. It's um, um, a shushing sound. Like when the the TV channel goes off and it has that crackling sound. Yes, the static sound. Yeah, yeah. static sound. It's constant. Yeah. And then if I have red wine or too much chocolate, there'll be um, a high-pitched tone. (gasps) 
Yeah. And you just learn how to live with it. Yeah. Um, One time when it was starting to be really bad was um, when I was in college and I was in this two hour exam, writing exam, and there was this horrible whoosh in my ears so loud. It was just so horrible. But um, it's not loud. And I think that if it were to get loud all the time, I would probably be driven crazy. So Mm -hmm. if you ever see me go crazy, it's because of that. But you just need to live with it. So I noticed when I have a cold, a really blocked nose, I can hear my blood circulating around. And do do you have this as well if you have a blocked nose? They say that when you go, you know, this floating, the sensory deprivation camera or something. Oh, the chambers. Yeah, yeah. The, so, do, do you call them cameras, actually? Because in Italian, camera is room. It's not a room. It's really more of a, it looks like a fridge, you know, but it's like Maybe it's a shape. chamber. Yeah, maybe. So you go inside, you know, they close the door so you do not see anything. And they say that since it's, sen- you know, like sensory deprivation, you do not hear any external sounds. So you can only hear internal sounds. So this the blood rushing and people say, I can hear everything. And it's so weird. It's freaky, isn't it? I want to try it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you said tap stripping or faucets dripping that annoys oh, you yes. before bed. Yes. Mm-hmm. What else would annoy you before bed? Motorcycles. I'm so happy that the season is over. All this at night. People still can drive. Yeah. Or for example, loud music from someone else's car, uh, like downstairs. Yeah. When they suddenly drive to your place and start playing music. Like at two two in the morning (laughs) when I am only about to go to bed. I, I can't help but laugh when people do that because you just know <laughs> that everyone in the neighborhood is getting angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so selfish, so rude. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm more wondering, you know, how, I mean, because I think my e- eardrum would just burst, you know, just be busted or something. How can they function after that? How can they, can they hear? Are they going deaf? Is this is dangerous level? Are you talking oh, about music, right. loud yeah. music? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The the nineteen eighties rock days. Yeah, being up close to the rock band, the amplifiers. Yeah. So yeah. My brother had a burst eardrum when he was a kid. I remember we were driving in a car somewhere. My parents, him and I, and I remember he started screaming, and we thought, "Stop! It. What's going on with you? Chill out." But it turns, and then all this liquid, I think, started oozing out of his ear. I can't remember all the details, but because I was a really mm-hmm. little kid, but I remember this, it looked pretty excruciatingly painful. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. Uh, but I think eardrums can heal. Is that true? Yeah, oh, I, they I can. Don't know. They can. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can. If yeah. someone boxes your ears, that's when it. it... Well, even sometimes doctors can. Uh, like, penetrate it uh, in order to heal uh, some uh, ear infection. So, and then, yeah. Yeah, and laser uh, surgery too. Uh, Like my condition can be. Oh, right. Yes. So they can put a laser through your ear? Well, some kind of laser laser surgery can heal, like put the bones back together or something. Interesting. Um, I wonder how that works. It sounds really tricky. Because yeah, I had an ear infection actually two weeks or three weeks ago. I had to go to Aww, the... Oh, you did? Yeah, no, I went or well, had a nice experience of the Russian private medical system, which is actually really good. And you can get healthcare same day really quickly. And they yeah. looked at my ear, made sure that I was healthy and just gave me some ear drops. But it was quite painful. Have you had ear infections? No, no? thank God. I hope I will never have one. Yeah, they're quite yeah. annoying because you and, can't hear. And, and you should have, that's, this is why we should wear scarves over our ears with the wind because that can um, keep your, that can infect your ears by the cold wind. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get ear infections because I have a lot of earwax and like when I clean it, then it's... Um, oh, I feel the, like the we infection. all got a little bit closer to Benjamin right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know me no, too well. No, something so personal. <laughs> you do actually. Well, <laughs> as long as you don't do it with the bobby pin. <laughs> bobby pin. <laughs> Probably would. <laughs> I haven't used that word in a long time. Bobby pin. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Do you want to explain to our listeners the what bobby a bobby pin, pin well, is? Well, when you put your hair in a bun, and you need to keep your hair in, in place, you use this little metal clip 
that you just, you have to open. Don't open it with your teeth because that will take the enamel off your teeth. But you open it with your thumb and then you stick it in and you can, if you're good at it. You can do it very quickly. Exactly. What do you call it in Russia? Is it zakolka? Uh-huh. That's, mm-hmm. that's the pin. I'd call it nividimka. Oh, it's because you can't see it. Yeah. So nividimka. So, so it's, it's kind invisible. Of like, but it's different from a hairpin. Pin. A hairpin is different. It, it, it is opened. A hairpin is like, it's bigger. No. Yeah. What do you call these things? Like clip. I think a hairpin. That's a, a clip. clip. Then there's a hairpin, which is open like a V. And you keep it open as a V. And that keeps your hat in place or, or really thick oh, hair. Oh, okay. Got yeah, it. Yeah, so that's got different. It. Well, anyway, coming back to sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So what, what is, that's all right. Well, we were speaking about my ears and how. <laughs> how <laughs> yeah, you fall with those waxy ears of yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, what's the most pleasant sound in your opinion? If we don't speak about music, for example. Just, yeah, because... ge- just any, any sounds. Mm. Mm. Well, maybe birds singing in the summer morning. When, well, summer morning or spring morning. It, I think birds are quite annoying. Well, it is not <laughs> only about uh, the sound of birds singing. It's about the whole impression they give, you know, because sounds, may, it's interesting. Maybe sounds uh, do, uh, are not so important to me in isolation, but as a, mm, as a part of something bigger. As a part bigger. of something, yeah, something bigger, uh, like visual <laughs> Oh, sorry, visual plus kinesthetic experience plus sounds, it makes the whole thing, yeah. But I think you would agree with me. Well, one of my favorite sounds are cats purring. Yes, oh, it is the best nice ASMR. Yeah. It is for me. Well, yeah. we're going to talk about ASMR sounds in I think the, it's in the, the only, after show. Yeah, the only ASMR I would appreciate. So ASMR, audio sensory meridian response. I believe that's what it stands mm-hmm, for. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned for our after show where we will talk about that in more depth. Yeah, cats purring are really comforting. It is. I like wind chimes. Mm-hmm. And it can have a different tones. And you know that the wind is blowing. It's very nice. How would you describe a wind chime to our listeners? Like ting, 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 ting. It's the metal. So some sort of like metal tubes. Mm, or it could be um, bamboo. Oh, it could be bamboo. Yeah. That's true. The bamboo ones, I think, are the best. Uh, those, had... those go clickety clack, clickety clack. Yeah. Oh, I love these onomatopoeic words, you know, how you describe this. Yes, sounds. onomatopoeia, exactly. Word, yeah, do you want to describe? Clitic- so basically, it's a word that describes the sound of something by, you know, with a word. So let's say click, 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 clack. Yes, exactly. Or like meow. That's a, meow. It sounds yeah. like a cat. Yeah. I well. have I have a weird experience with wind chimes because I remember when I was a kid, um, I had wind chime in the middle of my room, so kind of hanging from the ceiling or from the chandelier. And once I was sleeping with my back to the window, so my face was towards the wall. And I heard them, you know, moving. And I was like, oh, is that mom? And then I realized I was alone in the apartment. All the windows were closed. So what was that? Oh. And I felt like so creeped out. Like, what was it? There's no one. No gush of wind would be possible in the, you know, in this space because all the windows were closed down. I'm like, oh, ghost. Mm. Still do not know yes. what that was. Or um, seashells. Have you ever made any wind chimes out of seashells? Mm-hmm. I've Those seen the nice. pictures. Ah. I haven't made a wind chime, but I collected some seashells on my recent holiday. Yeah, I went to the um, Caspian Sea. So oh. Mahachkala, Derbent, and collected some seashells there. Aww. Maybe I should make a wind chime. Yes, yeah, so you need to just drill a little hole and then have get some string of some sort, dental floss or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> dental floss wind Strong. chime. <laughs> Use dental floss wind chime. <laughs> Speaking of pleasant sounds, also uh, water, like the sea. Yes. Tides, the sea, waves, yeah. and the air. Oh, sorry, the air. The rain, the rain falling Earth, down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that water can be both pleasant and annoying. Let's say the faucet dropping mm-hmm. yes, would drive me mad. Mm-hmm. Really, like, oh. I think because it's kind of a sharper sound. Yeah, whereas- because of the rhythm. I guess. Maybe. It's more abrupt, I guess, because it hits the metal sink. Well, you're trying to go to sleep and it wakes you up each time. But then with the rain, what does that do? It just, 
the the senses if you have your window open you can smell mm-hmm. it and hear it and well, I think it's because when, the, yeah, there's like a symphony of sounds when it's raining outside. Yeah. And like the rustling of the leaves. Yes. Whereas if there's a single isolated sound, it can be extremely annoying. Yeah, that's true. And because of some associations that it gives you, because faucet gives you associations that you need to call right. a plumber. Yeah, something's wrong. Some repair work needs to be mm-hmm. done. Also, train, the sound of the train. I love oh, that sound. Yeah, when, you're, yeah, you when you're on the train. Yeah, when you're on the train or when you put, some, kinda, ba- yeah. put on some background noise of, of a train, <laughs> it could be nice. I, I live next agree. to a railway and that well, is this not is the not sound. relaxing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is no, it, not relaxing. No, I think relaxing. it's extremely relaxing. Yes, yeah, as I a agree, kid, Benjamin, I did. because yeah. I've lived very close, just a couple of blocks from a track. And I just love hearing that woo-hoo and it comes through. Oh, see, this is a couple of blocks. I live like 10 feet. Oh, well, maybe that'd be a little... Do you know what? I would still like it. I think it sounds... When they're honking their horns at night... Oh, and the you're horns. Like, I like and, that. You know, and you're like, what is happening? Yeah. Like, where am I? What but am I? But how many come through the, a night? Just one or, or ten? Oh, a lot. Yeah, okay. So mine would be like one. one or two trains. So that's nice. Because, yeah, I live next to a busy railway. Mm-hmm. That would sure. maybe be a little annoying. Can you get a discount on your rent because of that? Yeah. I wish, but no. Fair enough. So yeah, good suggestion. The trip. What about planes? Would you live next Not to an airport? Not so much. I, I guess the this sound is disturbing. The sounds of an airplane taking off and landing, kind of disturbing to me. I used to live in Yakutsk, which is a really small town, really small one. And the thing is that because it is so small, you could hear all the planes taking off, and well, you would hear them, you know, because when they take off or landing, they're getting you know lower, so you hear them well. And I still remember how we were having, you know, we would be having dinner or something and there would be a plane and my dad would just look out the window like, ah, the flight to Moscow, (laughs) 10 minutes late today because he worked at the airport. (laughs) Uh So, and when I came to Novosibirsk, this was the first thing I noticed. You can't hear the planes. Very rarely can you hear the planes. Well, you can hear the fighter jets. Yeah, I love that sound. It's when I first moved here, I thought this is so cool. I get to see vintage Russian fighter jets flying around and making such a big noise so it's cool annoying. we so, have the military uh, planes i, I yeah. lived in forest park for 16 years right by the atlanta international airport oh, the busy, oh now my it's the, god I think it's the, the busiest, busiest. Yeah, yeah right right you know close enough five miles let's say three or five five miles oh wow. and i never noticed the takeoff of the planes ever until one day i was trying to make a phone call outside i needed to meet someone in a parking lot and I said, so, uh, just a minute, I've got to wait for that airplane. And I realized then that I'd been living with this, these airplanes flying over, never noticed. Yeah. So airlines can get fined now if they produce too much noise. Mm-hmm. And a lot of cities have noise detectors uh, placed around the airports. And if an airline, if an airplane uh, exceeds the sound or the noise limits, the airline could get a big hefty fine. Mm-hmm. And engines are being redesigned to to be quieter. To be honest, I think this is sad. I love the loud, <laughs> but it does disturb sound. birds and animal life as we're encroaching upon their habitat. So I, I'm very much against noise pollution. Actually, that is true. So it ha- there has been some sort of um, research that proved that birds now have to sing louder so their oh. mates could hear them because they live in the city. Yeah. So and there are so much. Uh, there's so much noise pollution so that they have to change basically the tunes, the loudness and the pitch Mm -hmm. because otherwise other birds cannot hear them. That's pretty funny because geese, they make the funniest noises (laughs) and ducks. (laughs) So now, are you talking about geese, do you think? Or are you talking about... Any birds. Any any wild birds. 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 Any. The little birds. They've got the, the, the city lights to contend with and now noise pollution. It's horrible. Mm hmm birdies. I always feel sorry for them. Like when there are fireworks and the, all those, ooh, oh, oh, they're so beautiful. I don't like fireworks because there's The so noise of the fireworks the are terrible for dogs and uh-huh. cats. And, 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 and actually, actually all the Can you imagine yeah. a birdie in a nest going, oh, you know, we'll be okay, children. I mean, it's just horrible. It's terrifying for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've known a few dog owners in London who, and they freak out when it's New Year's Eve. Dogs. What, what, what is, how does your cat, Maria, respond to fireworks? Uh, 
I don't think that I can hear a lot of fireworks from my place. Well, my cat is a bit neurotic, so he is afraid of a lot of things. Yes, mm-hmm. kind of like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should I tell them, Benjamin? Should I? Should my, I? My, my new nickname. <laughs> your, new, your new nickname? Yeah. We were talking last time that we were recording a podcast together about Benjamin said how he's a little bit neurotic. And I said that his new nickname would be Kotik Nevrotik. You don't look like a neurotic person. Maybe. No, you don't. No. You look well, like very calm. stable. Well, in the yeah. previous podcast, we were talking about punctuality. And I, I said how neurotically punctual I like to mm-hmm. be. And how it annoys my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has their points. Their things, yeah. But if you're German like me, you're just going to just naturally be on time. Yes. Well, speaking of languages, actually, you said German. I love the sound of German. Oh. A lot of people disagree with that. Oh, Which I love languages it. sound the best to you? I would say German. German. Russian. Spanish. Arabic. I hate Spanish. I Arabic, mean, Spanish really? is a cool language because you can use it everywhere. But the Spanish, Spanish is... Well, which, which Spanish do you prefer? Do you prefer the South Americans or the Central American I love Spanish? The, so, okay. I do not know why, but I have this... I have a soft spot for weird accents, maybe. I love the Northern accent in English. I don't know why. I just oh, it like it. funny. I like this Scottish accent, even though I make fun of it. Scottish but still. accent's amazing. I do agree with you totally. It I like really making is. fun of it, but it is cool. The same with uh, Spanish. I love the Argentinian accent because they say a lot of th. I was just going to say, because it's more Italianized, the and instead Argentinian of, let's Spanish. Let's say, s, very often they have just the aspiration. Like instead of España, they say España. Whereas so, in Spain, it's like, <laughs> everything is like, has this really sharp, I um, would say so. I don't know. They say the sexiest language is the Australian accent. Oh, since that's, when? That, I know. I Australian? don't agree. I don't agree. I don't agree. Not that's French? British. Not British. Italian? No, Australian. A lot okay. of people say that the sexiest accent is British. Well, Thank I have you. to say. <laughs> yes, I have to say. I think your voice changed a little <laughs> bit. <when you> said <laughs> that. <laughs> Australian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Australian. <laughs> Good day, mate. Well, I, I don't know. For example, you mentioned Arabic. Yeah, it scares me. The sound of the language. Actually, I, I have know. I have a challenge for our listeners. Maybe you could <laughs> you could participate in our Telegram chat and you can try to imitate a British accent, or if you can imitate a Scottish accent, you will get uh, a big thumbs up from me. Oh, really? So, you know, I don't think this video has come out yet, or the full of this video. But Benjamin and I were making a video where we guess the idioms, and I said the phrase with more or less like a northern accent. And you know what? What he did? A teacher. He made fun of me. <laughs> so because I said like, "Oh, to do the runner," and he said, "Oh, runner." He he what was, are you, he from was the not north? being a teacher at that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember role. that. Am I holding the grudge? My might. <laughs> Well different, lang- well, different dialects of English, of course, have different ways of pronouncing letters. Um, so, for instance, up in the north of England, the U is like, uh, so, mm-hmm. so I say butter. Butter. Yeah, butter. butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, so love. Different. Let's, let's hold a little bit of this to the after show so we can yeah, discuss. Dialects. Yeah, dialects and how Russians approach um, English and mm-hmm. the common pronunciation yeah, sure. differences. So, stick oh, we're going to talk as well show. about what is difficult about Russian language and what people do not really think about. Yes, yeah. so let's let's save it till then. You said that you like the sound of the Russian language. Is it true? I love the sound of because Russian. Because I have always been interested in how it sounds to someone who is it's, not native. The reason why I love it is because there's this mixture of like. Italian flow with like the harshness of German. So it is rude, is it? it, it there's this amazing mixture of like these harsh consonants mixed with this rhythmic mm-hmm. up and down. It sounds so cool to everyone. Because we have a totally different set of intonation and pitch. So Yeah. You also have all these kind of Turkic sounds as well. Yeah. Well, let's leave it. It's interesting yeah. when uh, they try to copy, to imitate the Russian accent in some American movies. Yeah. It's sometimes so funny. Oh, Harrison Ford. Yeah, did you see that? I forgot well, the film title. Mm, but don't, don't remember. Harrison Ford was quite funny. <laughs> he was the general of a, an admiral of a submarine. Mm-hmm. His voice sounded quite funny. So, yes. Um, 
Well, we were talking about noise pollution Mm -hmm. and how it messes up birds and other animals. How does it mess up humans? In a lot of ways. I think it can be really destroying, a destroying thing on some maybe cellular level, like the level of your cell or your like subconscious level, because you don't even realize, but for example, if you live uh, near the airport for a long time, it can do harm to you. Would you consider yeah. sound to be a uh, radiation, a form of radiation? Well, it affects your body, if that's what you mean. Radiation. Well, what is radiation? I mean, I'm not a scientist. I can't really say with certainty. Wave? But, but ultimately, kind of wave? Radi- yeah, it's like a kind of wave. It's a type of well, wave and sounds are vibrations. And of course, mm-hmm. they... A good example with me was that there was a time during the summer, I lived next door to someone who's, there was an L-shaped window, uh, L-shaped building. And my window was L-shaped to his window. In his window, he had a window air conditioner that was very, very loud, of course. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have an air conditioner, so I had to endure this sound. And it went through the, you know, all of these months, because it was Georgia, so it was a long time that it was on. But I was sitting there and all of a sudden it was time to turn it off for the season. It turned off and all of a sudden my shoulders went down. Oh, so you uh, had been tense all this time I without even right. realizing I, it. I looked at myself, I thought, oh my God, I can't believe I was like this, this entire time for five months. And then it turned off and I went like this. And I knew how strong a sound can affect your body detrimentally. Oh, it was, what an eye opener. I mean, noise pollution, even though sometimes we do not notice it, sometimes it's really disrupts. Yeah, we don't even notice it because we get used to it. We adapt. But it affects the sleep because we have poor sleep. And because of that, that in turn can cause, you know, a whole lot of problems, cardiovascular problems, uh, let's say stress level attention level so the, the mm-hmm. list goes on and on and on learning, concentration absolutely moods oh mm-hmm. for sure mm-hmm. yes think about it when you've had some poor sleep you get all moody and everything yeah and i mean noise pollution people who work on construction sites and everything so they're exposed to a lot of noise they can have impaired hearing so let's say if you spend a lot of time in loud coffee shops with a lot of sounds. Clinking of dishes. And, and the, the sound of the coffee machine, all this hissing, it's so loud sometimes. Spend there like five, ten years, you're going to have impaired hearing. The work of DJ. I, I thought, oh my God, I thought yeah. about it. Recently, my student was uh, telling me about, like it, it, she used to date a DJ and like oh, yes, I how know. difficult it was. Yes. <laughs> Yes, because the DJ would have a repetitive, would mm-hmm. have to repeat um, over and over again the same yeah. snippets of a song. Snippets, I mean, like a little piece of yeah, a like song. Yeah, like chunks, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. and it would drive him nuts, or drive her nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's- you know what about sounds and noise pollution as well and being exposed to loud sounds? So my dad worked at the airport yeah. for 30 years, I think. So, meaning that he had to spend a lot of time near the engine, which was very loud. Yes. He had impaired hearing, so very often he could not hear well, especially, you know, by the time he got retired. Well, preventive earmuffs are supposed to be a part of the equipment that you're supposed to... Yeah, they never got got any... Through through them, because especially for airplanes... Sorry, I love planes. (laughs) I know, yeah. Yeah, they produce such high-pitched loud sounds, especially when a plane turns on... Do you know what an auxiliary power unit is? Benjamin, no one knows what that is. Only <laughs> Benjamin knows aircraft, what that is. A lot of aircraft are banned from turn, from leaving these things on for too long. So it's how the plane starts as engines, you know? Mm. Oh, okay. So, so this like, I don't want to imitate the sound. It's going to be weird. <laughs> well, because the engines, you know, they need to spin when they start. And mm-hmm. they need, um, simply speaking, they need a large gush of air to, to start spinning the... We shouldn't the, have got to this topic fans. of airlines, you know, and airplanes. <laughs> I should have seen that coming, the Benjamin would well, be... Well, basically the APU helps the engine start and they make extremely loud noises. And so You're supposed to get the some sort of like earplugs or earmuffs. They, did, they never got that. Never. Yeah. So here's and the One effects. thing I, I need to mention, the APU is at the back of a plane. 
So <laughs> it's the bottom of the plane. Just let him finish. <laughs> um, so it, sorry, it can go on and on until you know. I mean, it could be a little bit like of OCR. Thing, yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> OCD, yeah. Exactly. That sounds, yes. Yeah. Um, what about movies? Are you a fan mm. of instrumentals in movies? Oh, Star Wars. I hate that. I hate that music. <laughs> Star Wars, because I, I knew it when it first came out. It was like 1977. You mean the mar March? Yeah, the March. And it was on hmm. the radio all the time. You uh -huh. had to hear this Star Wars. Well, and catchy tunes can be irritating. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So I never saw the movie. It was just too loud and noisy. But Star Wars is the one that I'm, I'm avidly against. <laughs> Yeah, catchy tunes. I have a problem where songs don't just get stuck in my head. They are like tattooed to oh, my brain. Oh, you mean like like a jingle, like a commercial like jingle. A jingle. Or yes. some pop like songs. Earworms. Uh -huh. Don't you call earworms. me earworms? Uh -huh. yeah, I what do you mean you? <laughs> well, don't I, I, you? I don't know. I've never seen, I've never seen that word. Maybe it does exist. Uh -huh. yeah, it does. Never, earworm. It, yeah. Yes, definitely. It does an earworm. So I've got you get, you get something earworms. inside your ear and it goes over and over and over, a repetition. Yeah. Maybe that's exist. why I have so much earwax. <laughs> <laughs> because of your earworms. Exactly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're dwelling. This so Star Wars is your oh, yeah. pet peeve. Oh, yeah. A pet just... peeve is something that annoys you. Yeah, so I've had to endure this since 1977. That's a long, many decades of this. Oh, yeah, Star Wars has been going on for a while. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. So, what, what was the question well, again? Well, music from, ah, from films. From, from, from films? It does affect the whole uh, film. I mean, some. Do you some, notice it? I mean, do you pay attention to it? To soundtracks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I know some um, TV series have a lot of brilliant soundtracks and uh, it just accompanies the whole thing. It, it, it makes it like feel more harmony. You feel more harmony when yeah, you watch it. Yeah, it pulls everything together. I definitely. Yeah notice it and of course like a scary part of a movie or something mm. wah, wah, wah. to build intense yeah. you know yeah something uh -huh. right yeah definitely i like that yeah what would a film be like without no the no, no. music well silent company? films before before sound but, Charlie Chaplin. <clears throat> but they had music but, though. They, oh they, they had did piano they did players. yes they did they had yeah. the piano exactly well i do believe on the street maybe i'm wrong but like in the 1920s or in the in the early days I believe people could put in a little coin and, and right. manually watch a little film. Yes, and I'm sure there's a little tinka tink tink music. Yeah, well, Charlie Chaplin was uh -huh. an expert yeah. of that. I love his moustache. It's <laughs> so funny. He's like Hitler's moustache. <laughs> right. Yeah, but with a hat. Yeah. Take off yeah. the hat. So, yeah, okay. Well, do you have any other favorites? Um, the musicals um, in the 60s, like um, all those. Musicals. <laughs> yes, the musicals. Um, Mary Poppins and Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I love that. A spoonful I, I, of sugar. sugar makes... Bless the medicine go down. The medicine go down. Yeah, I can see all of them. Yeah. No, that's going to be stuck <laughs> I actually in my head. looked up in the dictionary. I was eight years old and I looked up in the dictionary. Super Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I told my sister, I said, it's not even in the dictionary. And of course, she looked at me and like, oh, you stupid kid. Of course, it's not. It's a made-up word. Yeah, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Yeah. If you hear the sound of it, it's really something quite atrocious. So, yeah. But there are longer words in English, like this little Welsh town. Oh, my God, yeah. But that's that's um, yeah. not an English word. It's a Welsh word. Oh, I know an English word that's supposed to be the longest is anti-establishmentarianism. Oh, yes. That was big in the 1960s against Huge the Vietnam words. War. But the name of the Welsh place, oh, my God, yeah, it looks horrible. Yeah, I don't want, I want, I don't I'm not, I'm not to, even going to try, no. Yes. Well, guys, for our listeners, definitely check out that long Welsh name. And if you can try to pronounce it in the Telegram chat, send us a voice message. We would love to hear your attempts. And of course, try your Australian or British accents in the Telegram chat. So that's it for today. And definitely join us for the after show, which you can find the details in our Telegram chat. And of course, you need to check out our website, which is www.bigappleschool.com. And there you can get more access to podcasts, to videos, and you can find more information about the courses we offer at the school. 
And of course, you can check out some articles that we all write ourselves. So definitely leave us a like and make share your comments on the social media platforms. So thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Thank see you. Ya. Bye for now. Bye.